The Card Pewter by M5 Stack has always been my favorite cheap ethical hacking tool, but now it's all grown up. It's got all the features that we love from the Card Pewter, but now it's got a bigger battery, a better processor, and GPIO, so it has infinite add-on possibilities. Today, I'm going to be doing a comparison between the original Card Pewter and the Card Pewter Advance. And then we're going to take a look at a brand new piece of firmware, which is super cool. It's called M5 Pork Chop, which effectively makes the Card Pewter into a Ponigachi. This thing costs like 60 bucks to build on your own, so doing it on a $30 piece of hardware is amazing. Today, I'm going to show you everything you need to know about the Card Pewter Advance, including installing software to it, installing the launcher to it, and installing Pork Chop. It couldn't be easier. I just love this little device so much. It's perfect for that hacking devices don't have to be expensive. All right, let's get at it. This video is for educational purposes only. Only test your own hardware. Doing otherwise is illegal. Don't be a skip. With how cool the new Pork Chop firmware is, I'm actually really psyched to get to do another card computer video. So let's hop on down to the desktop and get at it. So here we are down at the desktop. All you gotta do is download M5 Burner. And if we load up docs.m5stack.com slash en slash download, you can also just Google M5 Burner. It's super easy. The link will take you right here. All you have to do is scroll down to firmware burning tool, find your operating system, click download, install it literally couldn't be easier so so simple so we've already done that and we can pull it up right here so this is m5 burner one of the easiest ways to install software on any m5 device this is one of the reasons why i love m5's ecosystem it is trivially easy to install almost everything no matter what the device it's all right here on the side it's super cool so let's scroll down to card pewter and then you can see all the firmware for the card pewter if we add an adv because this is the card pewter advance and search for that, it's going to show only the Card Pewter Advanced firmwares. So you can scroll down here. We have the UI Flow, which is the normal demo that they have. Um, we have the M5 Launcher, which is what we're going to be installing right now. Uh, Bruce for Card Pewter. Nemo's up there already. We've just got so many different cool applications on here. We have Mesh Tastic that's already ported over to the Card Pewter Advanced because one of the cool things about Card Pewter Advanced is that it's got GPIO. So we have a GPS and a LoRa hat right here. Super simple. We'll take a look at it in just a second. One of the firmwares I actually really like is this mini MP3 player, which looks exactly like Winamp. It's so nostalgic. I love that. All right, so let's not mess around. Let's scroll back up to the M5 launcher for card pewter. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our USB cable and plug this into our card pewter. It doesn't actually have to be on, so you can just plug it right in there. Hard to see out of camera. Bloop. One of the reasons why I like plugging it in with the app running is you can see that COM18 just popped up. So now we know it's on COM18. So I've already downloaded M5 Burner. It would normally say download if you haven't, but I have. Just go ahead and click the burn button. And it's going to tell you it's an unofficial firmware. We know this. Click continue. COM18 because we know we just plugged it in. So we know it's the right COM port. And click start. Takes a couple seconds. And we know if you're a little bit patient, it'll get done in no time. Yo, it's Talking Sasquatch, hacking the planet from his mom's basement. Subscribe to Talking Sasquatch before the internet does. Hack the planet. Talking Sasquatch. And just like that, it's done. Two seconds, couldn't be easier. I love M5 Burner. Now, one thing you might notice is that M5 Launcher doesn't have Pork Chop, which is what we're trying to install. It's too new, but I'm pretty sure it'll be on there at some point soon, maybe even by the time this video is up. However, I'm gonna show you how to download it the old school way. So we'll close Launcher because we no longer need that. And then we're just gonna go to the GitHub. So this is uh, zero, uh? zero, zero count, zero sec. I'm not really sure if that's the name, but yeah, M5 Pork Chop, and this is where we're gonna download it from. All we gotta do is scroll down to releases right here, and we'll be able to find our bin for it. Fantastic, do to do. And once we get down to the bottom, we have my firmware, forgot my meds. They're really clever about how they name their firmwares. So we're just gonna go ahead and click that and then save that right to our desktop, couldn't be easier. And then you can do this one of two ways. You can pull the SD card out of your card computer and then using like an SD card adapter or a laptop, put it directly in there this way. But I've never showed how to use M5 Launcher's web UI in order to install stuff. So that's the way we're gonna do it. So let's switch cameras to the hands-on and I'll show you the workflow. All right, so we have the card pewter, the original card pewter. Right now we're running Doom on it because it looks super cool. And then this is the card pewter advance already running that pork shock firmware I was talking about earlier. 
So really the big differences are right here you have a little audio port for headphones. Very, very cool, that's brand new. The new Carpeter Advance does have a bigger battery. It's got a 1750 milliamp hour battery, says right here. The OG Carpeter's got a 1400 milliamp hour battery, plus another 120 milliamp hour battery. They both have a similar Lego Technics attachment points on the back, which I like. Colors are slightly different, no big difference there. And then you'll notice on top, this has that GPIO port, which allows us to plug in things like this. This is a LoRa cap. So this has GPS and LoRa. All you gotta do is plug it into the top right here and clips right in, super simple, super easy. You could even, if you really wanted to, screw that in. Those are the main differences between the card pewter and the card pewter advanced physically. So let's go ahead and restart this. We can press the restart button right there and you'll see M5 launcher is already loaded up. It loads up this cool little like matrix screen and if we press a button, we get into the menu. What we wanna do is go to WUI, which is web UI. Click over there, click the button, and we're just gonna go to AP mode, which is an access point. It's gonna make the card computer its own access point. Click load that. And then, yeah, awesome. It says our IP address, this is gonna be, although we also just need launcher.local. That's what we're gonna to use to pull up. The user is admin and the password is launcher. Cool, cool, cool. So if we hop on down to the desktop, cool. Now we have our desktop. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over and load up our network. So our network is called launcher. Just load it up right there and click connect. And then remember we said we're gonna to go to launcher.local, click enter there, and within a few seconds, this should hopefully pop up. So I have run into this before. Launcher.local wasn't loading, but we can log directly in with 172.0.0.1. Then we have our username, which is admin, and our password, which is launcher. Enter. Perfect, don't need to save this for now. Right here you have some basic things that you can do with the launcher itself, as far as you can do an over the air update. We can go to our SD card files is what we're gonna do. We can do all sorts of cool stuff to control our card pewter. So let's go to the downloads folder right here, cause that's where I'm gonna drop this firmware. And then we're gonna go to send file. And then we're just gonna load up, not my thumbnails, desktop. And this is going to be our firmware. Cool, cool, cool. In just a second, this will load. Perfect, here's firmware and I believe we can rename it here. We're gonna rename it to porkchop.bin. Perfect, there we go. And that's all we should have to do from here. Let's switch cameras back. And now we have our card computer advanced, which is still running the server. We're gonna restart, hold that button up there. And from here, we're gonna load the SD card. It's hard to see what the exposure, but that's what that first icon says. We're gonna go down to downloads. And now we're gonna go to Porkchop. Doo, doo, doo. Fun fact, I had actually already downloaded Porkchop using the OTA installer of the over the air installer. So that's why there's another copy in here, but for now we'll use the one that we just grabbed. So from here, it's just gonna go ahead and install itself. Just be a little patient. And again, it'll finish when it finishes. More moments later. Hey, there we go. My name is Porkchop. And just like that, it's already running. Let me kick the exposure down on here because we do have a menu. Well, let's, yeah, let's make it easier to read and then we'll show you. But not before this quick segue to today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for all things PCB design, manufacture, 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, and so much more. And I say it all the time, but don't forget the module store. The module store has maker tools, maker materials, all sorts of stuff. Just scroll through there and I guarantee you, you'll be inspired for your next project. And no matter what your next project is, PCBWay has engineers on staff to make sure it's as easy as possible and that your project will get done right. Thank you so much, PCBWay, for your continued support. You guys are absolute legends. All right, let's get back to it. Oh yeah, that looks way better. I also want to note that we are testing my own network and this is me giving myself permission to test my own network, which is what I'm doing right now. So yeah, this is Porkchop. It's got a bunch of different commands you can use. So let's go to O right now, which is oink mode. Oink mode is effectively Ponegachi mode. What it's going through, it's seeing all the packets that are flying around my test environment and recording what's going on. Another fun part of it is it's actually a virtual pet as well. So you'll see as we go through, we actually level up, which is really fun. And it makes you feel like you're accomplishing something. What's also so fun is it actually will shoot off a little alert anytime it finds anything of interest. You can turn that on or off depending upon what you want to do, but it's a fun little feature. So now if we press the D button, this is what's called the do no ham mode. The do no ham mode is effectively the same as the Ponegachi mode, except it's neutered. So there's gonna be no packet sent at all. It's just gonna be recording anything that happens to be floating around our test environment. So now what you can do is go ahead and pop on your little GPS hat right there, because what we're gonna do now is Warhog mode, W. 
So if we click that button, now we're in Warhog mode. And if you couldn't guess, Warhog mode is war driving. So what we're doing is driving around or biking around or doing whatever. And if it finds an access point, it will geotag that. And then we can even upload it directly to Wiggle that way. People really seem to love war driving. So let's go back into our settings. You can see, do, 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 and to settings. You can see we can enter in our local SSID. So as anytime this thing gets close to our local network, it will connect to it. And you can set your Wiggle name and your Wiggle token. So this will automatically upload all your files directly to Wiggle. So war driving, never been easier. So if you do want to do war driving, one thing you have to do is make sure that you go on and change the TX and RX pins for the GPS so it knows exactly where it's looking for. So for the card pewter advance with the LoRa cap, we want to set the RX pin to G15, TX pin to G13. So right now it looks like my RX pin is wrong. So let's change this to 15, enter. And then GPS is set to 13. And then our baud rate still is 115200, so that should be good. So actually now our GPS should be working. Brilliant, GPS reset, good to go. Now we'll go ahead and hop back into our Warhog mode. You will notice that even though we've got it set up correctly, I'm probably not gonna find any GPS satellites. That's because I'm in a controlled test environment to make sure that anything I'm testing, I'm doing both ethically and safely. So now let's check out B, which is our Piggy Blues mode, which is our BLE spam area. The Pork Chop does have the ability to do all of the BLE spams that we know and expect from a device that can do Bluetooth. But one of the interesting features that Pork Chop has is it will scan nearby devices devices and see what's actually out there and then select spams based off of what devices are in the nearby area. Very, very interesting. Honestly, we're not even going to test this feature because it's super, super annoying and there's really no reason to even use it. All right, so let's hop into the menu and go to the hog spectrum. Now the hog spectrum is just that. It's kind of a spectrum analyzer. It allows us to see how many devices are on which channels. It's very useful if you're setting up a network because you know if you have too many devices connected on the same channel. Great feature. Now I have to say that the M5 Pork Chop is probably the most impressive piece of firmware or software, whatever, for the card pewter that I've seen since Evil Card Pewter. It more or less makes the card pewter into a Ponegachi and an ESP32 Marauder. It has every feature you could really want in a software and the UI is really fun. The entire project, it's, it's super, super fun. It's super user friendly. It's a great little piece of software to really learn how this device can work and dip your toes into cybersecurity. It is absolutely phenomenal. I really do like it. Great job, you guys. I gotta say, when I lost my last card pewter video, I was super bummed. So having the M5 Pork Chop pop up being such a cool piece of firmware got me super excited to make a brand new video. So what's your favorite feature of the M5 Pork Chop? Leave a comment down below. And if there are any other firmwares out there you want me to check out, comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. It helps me out a ton. All right, we'll catch you next time.